I'm going to call them the Monday, uh, April 12th uh, Economic Development in UW Extension Committee meeting for order. Um, Madam Clerk, can we do a roll call? James Slender. Present. Tom Duffy. Here. Jesse Spencer. He's trying to, he's trying to Brian Dusnap. Stacey Hessel. Here. Thank you. Can you see it, Brian? Brian, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Madam Clerk, we have a plan to open the meeting box. Yes, this meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. <clears throat> Does the committee members chance to review the agenda? Is there any changes posted? So. Hearing none, moving on to public comment. Is there anybody here or online that's not on the agenda that wishes to address the committee at this time? Ms. Zomer. Can you hear us? Chairman, thank you for uh, recognizing public comment. I um, want to thank the committee for bringing forward the agenda item to develop a mission statement and the roles and responsibilities of this committee. I do hope this isn't a meeting to act and approve on or approve it to pass it on. Um, I would like maybe some clarification on what are county agencies, because I think the entities that are listed aren't county agencies, although they be, may be agencies or entities in the county. And the mission statement itself uh, amidst a very, what I think is an important aspect is for planning and setting goals, objectives, and actions in order to be able to measure outcomes. Um, as the WCA presented in that training meeting last Thursday, and I think every time the WCA has come to present before the county board or at their district meetings, um, they have stressed the importance of strategic planning and I believe Sawyer County's, one of your uh, extension agents has helped an, an adjoining county, uh, Barron County, with doing that strategic process. So um, please consider amending that mission statement. Um, I also sent an email to Administrator Hoff and Clerk Fitch regarding signing up for the up, upcoming Wisconsin Rural Partners Annual Summit that has generally been an annual event. And I believe both um, Lori Beltrusis and Lynn Finch attended a couple of years ago when it uh, was held in Rice Lake. Uh, this year, there will be a series of weekly sessions and I think they are topics of interest for Sawyer County. And mostly I want to recognize the, um, something that maybe Lori Beltrusis will cover in her report has has been the virtual training and connection that the agents in a number of our counties have been collaborating on, and that's with the Strong Bodies Program. It has just uh, evolved into so much more than just an exercise program, the enrichment as far as education for physical health, mental health, um, just the sense of community for the emotional well being of the participants is wonderful. And it it really demonstrates how extension agents collaborate and they really um, work hard for the benefit of the clients they serve. So please, Lori, extend my appreciation and recognition for the folks that are working on that program. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to address the committee? Anybody else online? Anybody else present in the, in the room? Okay, moving on to... Six minutes for the last meeting for the month meeting. Any attempt to review them? Mr. Duffy? I move to approve the May committee. I have a motion for Mr. Duffy. Second. Second for Ms. Hessel. Any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes? Hearing no discussion, call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Madam Clerk, can you recognize that Mr. Becker is now? Berkeley, uh, here on, uh, Berkeley. Yeah. Number seven, Sarah County Agricultural Fair Association. <clears throat> Rick Christian, Sarah County Fair President. Um, so now that everything's warmed up, we're uh, 
we'll be starting our, our spring cleanup and getting ready for all the, uh, the capital improvements that we have. Our fair is 95% um, contract signed and ready to go, um, which the last couple of years we've been ahead of previous years. Um, so now it's just a big push to get everything ready and make our fairgrounds look a lot better than it has. So I'll get our arena fixed and uh, all our horse stalls done. Um, Any questions for Mr. Christians? How are we standing with the uh, finances? Finances, we are um, a lot, way better than we've ever been since the, the six years that I've been on the board. We're um, usually we're paying our bills that were from the previous fair. Um, even with the yeah, numbers being down 42% last year, between sponsors and the spending we cut out, we actually paid all of our bills. All of our kids got their premiums as soon as the fair was over last year, which usually they didn't get it until we got our money from the county. So we we're actually sitting pretty pretty good right now. Do you have any major changes for the next year? Um, no major changes. Basically, our fair will probably look will look pretty close to the way it was last year with uh, Chris Carizzi on Friday Night Horse Bowl bull riding and um, Chad Edwards band on Saturday night, the demo derby again on Sunday. Um, our family tent will, our act will be a, a different one than we've had, um, but no major changes. We're, we're sending out a letter to the chamber. They're gonna, they'll send a letter to all their vendors so we can try and get more vendors filling spaces at the fair. Um, I think one, one change that we've been discussing is Thursday night was all of our, always our family night and it was a free night. Um, we have to been talking about making a change where instead of it being free, being per car load, just something, get a little bit of revenue on Thursday night. It's not for sure. Every year it was always um, church group who came, did music. And this year, I don't think they're interested in doing it again. So we're trying to get something else for Thursday night. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody online that would have any questions for Christmas? Thank you for your report, sir. Thank you. Moving on to number eight, University of Wisconsin Extension Department report. Good morning. So um, I have the Hot Off the Press's annual report. I think I promised you last time around. Um, that just gives a highlight of what uh, Extension in Area 2 has been doing over uh, from 2020. And um, I'm going to see what floor copies with the man. So, um, so, um, so you'll have your annual the annual report. It is online as well, and so um, we want to make sure that um, people can get a hold of it. And if you're fancy enough and want to do the QR code on the back, that will take you to it too. So. If you need the live link or want the live links, welcome to look for it online. Um, otherwise, it's, I think, good reading and a good uh, summary of what our year uh, last year looked like. And um, highlights a few of the things like Linda, I didn't even pay Linda to say anything about strong bodies and extension this morning, but there's um, something in the annual report as well as the, the other sheet I gave you is just for um, the first quarter of 2021. So that's a nice summary too of what we've been up to um, for the first few months of 2021. And um, there is a, a little write up from the Foodwise people about strong bodies. And so, as you remember, Foodwise is something that comes to your uh, county because you have extension. And so that's the, the program that Linda was speaking of, it's all written up there for you, and really just is a nice way to bring some people together. We've had some really good feedback about, about that, and people being a little more active, and they do a little nutrition lesson as well, and so that is available for you to look at. Um, any questions on either one of these things before I go on? Just kind of quickly, we have a lot of questions for you next Yeah, I was going to say, and, and really just give me some feedback about this is the first time we've done an area annual report. And so I do think that we, because we have some educators who work across county lines, sometimes it allows more opportunities for Sawyer County that you don't have to have every single educator um, that you're paying for, but that we do some reciprocal education across county lines, especially virtually right now, that makes it a little easier for us to do that. So um, we're excited about those opportunities. And then we switched to a quarterly report for you this year 
instead a little less reading for you um, and sometimes the things that we're working on carry over more than one month and so um, we're hoping that the quarterly report will be helpful for you to just kind of have a better uh, feeling for what we're doing long term um, so that's all of that and then Arika is here to give you some more information in person today Good morning, everyone. I do have places scheduled. I saw Sheldon online. I don't know what the right is <laughs> And uh, another set of events that I'm organizing right now is Motor Food Summit in partnership with Oakville College. Uh, oh, coming up. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to ask, I wasn't sure if this guy had emailed stuff out. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hello, thank you. Perfect. And um, we're a little bit behind of paperwork, but on the back of the local food summit, we have um, the session. There will be a track of sessions A and B. Overall, I think we will have uh, roughly um, 16 or 15 sessions. We're trying to confirm everything. This is going to be a local food summit that will incorporate a lot of information from the state and also tribal communities. It's a mixed tribal, non tribal. I am especially excited about. Um, track A on April 21st, a tribal model food food, tribal safe harvest and gathering. I think this is a great uh, presentation. They're just working on food food for tribal communities, and um, this is something state doesn't have. So, this would be very important, uh, very important, especially for uh, farmers' markets if, uh, if there will be any vendors tribal, non-tribal at the reservation, what, what we need to know. Then uh, grants for X startups. Um, Laura, I need you to pull that mic up closer to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, crowdsource loans, it's hard with a mask. <laughs> and uh, we have a colleague of mine that will share indigenous food projects in tribal communities. She specifically works in Red Cliff. Um, they're doing a wonderful job there. And uh, starting a food business in Wisconsin, this will be very extension. And um, farmers markets, another specialist that we have in the state um, that worked uh, with farmers markets across the state. So we want to learn about the best models, how farmers market is being managed. If there is no funding, what is the best model we could perhaps customize or learn. Um, so that would be another interesting session. And Kevin and I, Kevin Schechter, our egg agent, and I will have a session as well to share the work that we do in local foods here in Surrey County. And um, Elsa College Extension will also share the session on starting the food garden around your home. As we all know, going into COVID last year, a lot of people started to ask questions, how do I set up a garden? Uh, how do I produce some of the um, products that I could uh, utilize in summer and if there's a leftover what do we do with that can we sell it can we give it away how what is the right way and of course there's always food safety we don't have that session food safety how to safely produce a food in food garden yet because we're just trying to explore the waters with this summit and see what are additional sessions that uh, will be needed for this community so this could be an ongoing maybe annual but um, this is a partnership with Elsa, and we're going to just see how this works out and um, what is the interest of the community in this uh, local food summit. So that would be it. And I do have Clean Sweep scheduled. Uh, Surrey County, I think, is scheduled for September 22nd. I don't know what the changes were with COVID last year. We shifted the Clean Sweep to September, and now there are clusters of collections. I think it's Sawyer and Lady Smith. The collections, can you, I missed that last part. Cluster, the company comes the freelance to collect in Ladysmith, then they want to go to Sawyer. 
So it's like more neighboring counties together for the freelance company. I, I think Sheldon probably will explain it better. But we had to kind of coordinate our schedules with neighboring counties to see if that would be something uh, more efficient, I would say. So September 22nd, I think it is for Sawyer, but I have already people calling. Um, if there is something that they need to dispose of right away, I send them to Spooner. Otherwise, our schedule starts in neighboring counties or June 15th in Taylor County. Not too close, but it's, <laughs> it is what it is. I think there is a shrinkage of dates as well. So that's what I have. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to Mr. Bissonnette and Mr. Betcher, we had some handouts that were uh, distributed. I think they're available online. If not, I'm going to make sure that the clerk or Mr. Hopp distributes those copies to you. They're actually pretty uh, interesting. It's an annual report, a local food summit report, uh, invitation, and then there's a uh, first quarter report uh, from, from the extension. So the 2020 annual report, first quarter 2021 report from EW Extension. Um, Mr. Betcher, Mr. Bizonet, do you have any questions about the information that was presented from uh, UW Extension? This is Jesse. I don't have any questions, but uh, yeah, thanks. If you can send that to me, that'd be great. Yeah, I don't have any questions either. Um, but you said that they're on a link that we should be able to access them, right? There was a, um, the, re the first quarter report was a link in your, on the agenda, and it's online. The annual reports, I can get you the link, but I'll also make copies and stick them in your mailboxes. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Um, and I guess a question for this committee too, it, would it be helpful, do you want me to make um, copies of the annual report for the entire county board as you're thinking about how to explain what extension is doing? Would that be helpful? That's fine with me. I'm happy to. We think it'd be helpful. Taylor for each one. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions for uh, Ms. Beltrus or Riga? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, who are the presenters at the local food shop? Will be extension. Um, some people who are dead cap, um, UW extension, um, LCO extension on some of the sessions. Um, and colleagues across the uh, state. There are some that are state people and um, um, colleagues of LCO tribal community that uh, actually have expertise in this. So these are pretty much experts in their topic. And um, a couple of uh, grant egg startups and crowdsource loans uh, are private companies that have um, that have loans and grants, and they're going to share what they actually do. Agribility is uh, the last session is uh, is also extension, but it's a separate department for people who are handicapped and want to go into farming. And they're just going to share what programs they have and also what uh, kind of equipment can be used for people with disability. Any other questions? Thank you for your report. Good. Moving on to number nine, Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau. Hello, we've had another crazy busy week advertising the Sawyer County area, that's for sure. Well, the last couple weeks. Um, so here's my April report. We've been doing that Let's Talk Hayward Facebook Live, and it's been a big hit. So we're going to continue to do that for another couple months. This Thursday, we will have another show, and our guests are going to be Jeff Evans and Eric Tui. They're both fishing guides. And then Mark Kerner is going to talk about ATV. The, um, I just want to let you know about the Wisconsin Indian Head Country Governor's Fishing Opener. You should have all received an invitation to Friday night's banquet. Um, and I also wanted to remind you that we will have the free fish fry on Friday, which will be April 30th. And anyone is invited, and it's, it's all free. Um, the Northwest IPEC, we are updating the ATV Snowville Corridor map, which is a really nice piece that we work with the 11 counties. So anybody in any of those counties can know a trail or a route to get them to the other counties. That should be here by July. 
we did the Snap a Selfie Snowmobile Contest. I don't know if anybody saw the Sawyer County record, but they they did a nice recap of how the contest went. It was money that was funded from the Department of Tourism. Um, we appreciate that. And I will be applying for a second year. Um, the good news is that um, we saw a 62% increase in the number of snowmobile maps that were requested. And then 55% um, of the people, the lodging that I um, sent a survey to said they had a direct benefit from that promotion. So we're pretty excited that that went so well. We are also doing some new, um, trying to you know stay ahead of the game and videography seems to be you know what everybody's after so we've been do producing these little 60 second or 30 second between 30 and 60 second videos of different um businesses around the area and those seem to be going really well we're posting those on social media and people are just loving it especially tourists they're like oh i've been there or can hardly wait to get back so those are all positive positive things coming out of that um, Wisconsin Department of Tourism. So this year they didn't have the big um, governor's conference in person. So we've been doing these four half day programs, which has been really interesting and it's kind of nice. Um, there's a lot of, you know, you can answer questions or they can ask questions and, and it's been real interactive. It's been very nice. We're also um, this week doing a virtual legislative day, which is going to be on April 14th. And I'm going to meet with um, this is all online with Representative Dave Armstrong and Senator Janet Buley. I did meet with Jimmy Boy Edmond last week and um, the, the issues that we have, um, they're all on our, on our side. So it's, it's a really good time for us to be talking with them when the issues are um, favorable. <laughs> We also sports shows. So, you know, they everything got canceled except one they decided to do as a virtual one, which was Canoacopia, which was in March. And it was kind of a really fun, different kind of thing. Um, we got to put all kinds of stuff on their videos. We got to have pictures. Um, we got to do live chats with the people. Um, it was kind of fun. It was the weekend of March 12th through the 14th. We only got about 360 visitors to the booth. Um, and then we got about 62 people who asked for additional information. Usually we get about, we had about 250 out in person. So I thought that was pretty good for being alive and people had to pay to go to this show. So it was kind of interesting that they would do that. So I think they miss, they miss that kind of stuff. Also the first in-person show will be the Wisconsin State Fair, which we will be at for 10 days from August 5th through the 15th. Um, this week, set your DVRs for Discover Wisconsin on um, <laughs> April 17th. We're going to have um, our ATD Snowville show that we've been working on for, you know, almost a year. So we're pretty excited about that. We're, that's a joint effort that we did with the Douglas and Douglas County and Superior Chamber of Commerce. So and I just wanted to show you some of the PR that we've gotten, the free stuff. Pretty cool some of the things we got. Um, we ended up in Thrillist, which was that writer that at the last minute was supposed to be up in the Bayfield area. And she looked on the map and said, what's Hayward? What's that all about? So at the last minute, we kind of threw together a, a little program for her and she came down and we actually got in her, in her article, she was um, mentioned Angry Minnow and Main Street Tacos, where I took her for lunch. So that is pretty cool. Um, and then I don't know if you know that comedian, Char Charlie Behrens, but he actually mentioned um, the Park Theater in one of his um, Facebook bits back in March. So that's some kind of the fun stuff that's happening. Any questions for Ms. Beckman? Anybody have mine for Henry? Sherry, thank you for your report. Okay. Moving on to number 10, Northwest Regional Planning Commission report. Mr. Johnson, the floor is yours. All right, uh, good morning, everybody. I uh, appreciate the time today, and uh, it's good to hear and see some of you folks as well. I uh, wanted to cover a few things that were included in your packet and a couple of things that I did not include. Um, on your screen, uh, in front of you, uh, you had, uh, we, we mailed copies of our, our 2020 annual report to all supervisors and administrative personnel across the region. 
So we've reformatted our, our, uh, our annual report a little bit. So you can go through there. It covers our four, our four core areas in planning, economic development, environmental services, and housing assistance. So uh, on the screen, I, I won't go over it page by page, but you can see who the, the membership is of the Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Uh, it is a full 31 members, uh, tribal representatives, and units of governments as well. Um, from that, I'm not going to read my, my excellent uh, director's report, uh, but you, hopefully you can read that at your leisure uh, and look over uh, the report as well. There's a couple things uh, that we highlighted that were Sawyer County specific, uh, working in the town of Draper on their comp plan. Uh, the town of Sand Lake, I think, bumped their, their comp plan update back a, uh, uh, to next year. Uh, as most of you know, we're working on the Sawyer County comp plan. Uh, and some other work uh, in the in the county there as well. So just wanted to cover that. That's on the planning side. Uh, that's just a highlight of some of the stuff that we're working on, but not everything in its entirety. Uh, if you wanna go to the EDA section next. So we've had a long, strong partnership with the Economic Development Administration out of the US Department of Commerce. Uh, we received a number of grants over the last year and a half from EDA uh, to the Planning Commission to help uh, do planning and strategic efforts in the region. Uh, one of those is the uh, EDA Regional Infrastructure System database that we're working on. Uh, this is a four county coastal specific project. Uh, it fell under the EDA um, disaster declaration. So we're going out and inventorying culverts uh, uh, at road crossings to examine the infrastructure and look at what the risks are for future flooding and future washouts uh, from that study. So we started that last year. Uh, the project is intended to be wrapped up this year, but as we all know, weather uh, pretty much plays a big part in whether or not we can be in the field or not. Uh, we were really hoping to be in the field already, but unfortunately we haven't been able to do so yet. Um, we also are doing a broadband survey project that was again targeted to the four coastal counties in the north because of the uh, disaster declaration. And that's, that's a project that we're specifically examining uh, households and businesses and the impact of broadband and whether they have service, don't have service. And if they do have service, what level of service do they have? Um, as part of the COVID pandemic, the CARES Act provided extra funding to regional planning commissions uh, across the country. Uh, we were fortunate to receive an extra $400,000 to provide some planning efforts across the region. Uh, one of those impacts will be a, a project that we'll be starting later this year. Uh, it's looking at the resiliency of the region as it relates to potential other pandemic uh, related uh, impacts uh, to units of governments and the capacity that uh, they have to react to that. So we'll be working with the uh, public health communities across the region and other stakeholders uh, moving forward in that respect as well. Um, uh, another big part of the organization, as you all know, is on the economic development side. Uh, Ken Pearson uh, reports to you usually about every three months or two months on uh, some of the activities that are happening within the organization in our revolving loan funds that we have. Uh, we have a number of those. Uh, one of particular interest to Sawyer County, obviously, is the uh, New Red Fund, uh, which uh, back in 2006, Sawyer County and a number of other communities and counties contributed their dollars towards economic development efforts. Uh, Ken reports on that uh, to you. Uh, the Enterprise Center Network uh, continues to uh, be uh, one of the key components that we have within some of our communities, uh, growing uh, entrepreneurial and startup companies uh, in that respect. Uh, we continue to look at other opportunities to expand the Enterprise Center Network. Um, unfortunately, oftentimes communities that want one uh, don't meet the EDA distress criteria uh, for grant eligibility. Um, there are a number of metrics that have to be met uh, to, to be able to apply to EDA and uh, receive funding assistance for an enterprise center network. Uh, the next page just impacts or uh, shows some of the impacts on the revolving loan funds that the organization has made across um, across the region over time, uh, since uh, 1983, as a, as a matter of fact. Uh, over the last 15 years, the organization has uh, received um, additional dollars uh, that has really boosted the overall efforts that we've been able to help businesses in the region. 
and Ken Pearson uh, updates you annually or periodic, periodically on uh, activities that are specific to Sawyer County. But as it relates to the, the local community investments, we've put about $306 million uh, into our funds uh, that we have that we administer on behalf of the region. And you can see what the private, public, and owner equities are, are significantly higher uh, as, a, as a regional uh, entity. And again, remember our loans are traditionally match dollars or uh, leverage dollars that we provide that the primary financial institution uh, is looking for a partner in the financial equity uh, of the company for, for sharing in that risk. And then the, the housing section, just wanted to report on that, the next page. So uh, we administer a housing rehab program uh, on behalf of the 10 county region. But as many of you know, we also administer the Sawyer County CDBG revolving loan fund for housing rehabilitation. Uh, so the rehab, the rehab program covers the, the green on my screen uh, elements. Typically, uh, these are low to moderate income households who traditionally or typically can't afford some of the major maintenance to their home. Uh, th these programs can help provide that assistance to them. So what we do is uh, we provide 0% deferred payment loans uh, to eligible clients uh, to make repairs to their home. Um, I asked Kim Gifford. Kim Gifford is our, pr our primary lead uh, on our housing program. What the activity level has been in Sawyer County as of late. Uh, she reported that two weeks ago she signed a mortgage with a homeowner. Uh, we currently have four pending Sawyer County applications that will go through the regional housing program, uh, not the county specific program. Uh, we only have $144 left in the revolving loan fund. Uh, we've obligated all the remaining funds that, uh, that are there uh, for that program. So yeah, the region- I have, a, I have a question for you, Sheldon. Yes, so sir. If, you're, if that, if you're, go, go back to that one right there. So if you have, if you're providing low interest loans or no interest loans, to people that can't afford it, how are they going to be able to afford the payment? Is this a second mortgage you're attaching to the house or what? Yeah, uh, great question. Thank you. Um, yes, it is a mortgage that is attached to the house. Uh, it is a 0% loan and it's a deferred payment loan. So they're not required to make payments. They are required to pay the loan off when they sell the house uh, or, they don't longer, or, or they no longer live in the house. So it, it's a mortgage that's secured for, let's just say it's a $20,000 total all-in project. That mortgage is secured by, uh, that, that work is secured by a mortgage and it sits there until the homeowner sells their house. They have a choice if they want to pay it back monthly, once a year or whenever, uh, but there's no interest that accrues and it's whatever the original amount, amount was for the loan is what it's uh, paid back five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever it would be. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, and then we'll just jump quickly to the environmental services. And I'll, I'll wrap in a little bit of the conversation that Arriga was alluding to. So uh, last year we collected about 134,000 pounds of materials across the region. Uh, and Sawyer County included in that. So because of COVID last year, we, we modified our schedule slightly uh, we added an extra hour last year to go um, a five hour window <laughs> instead of our traditional four. Uh, we've been having the Sawyer County event last year at the fairgrounds. It worked really well. And I really do want to thank Ariga for her efforts at the county level to help in coordinating uh, the site logistics, um, working on promotion and pushing this information out uh, to, the, to the members of Sawyer County. Um, as Ariga mentioned, she's getting calls as we are as well. Uh, we get lots of calls every day uh, from homeowners asking how do they get rid of um, paint or chemicals or old gas or antifreeze, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so we've been running the, the Clean Sweep program for, um, shoot, I think since like 1995. Uh, 19, yeah, 1995, I think the start date was. Um, where we provide residents an opportunity to dispose of their items for free. Uh, businesses can also attend the events, uh, but they have to pay for their materials. Uh, again, this is a program that Sawyer County participates in, uh, along with a grant that we receive from DADCAP. So we receive $55,000 from DADCAP to cover the uh, expenses above and beyond what the county contributions are uh, to the program. 
so uh, that's a, a great opportunity to, to leverage some of those funds at the state level. As Ariga mentioned, uh, September 22nd from two o'clock in the afternoon to 6 p.m. at the fairgrounds is where we're gonna be hosting that event. Uh, we will again be using uh, Veolia Environmental Services uh, to host and uh, run that event uh, uh, for us. So it worked out really well last year. Now uh, we're looking forward to it again this year. Um, and then our revenues and expenses side, that's just a, a snapshot of uh, some generalities for budget purposes. And that's the, uh, that's the annual report uh, as we have it today. Um, again, that's just uh, a snapshot of information for some of the county board members that maybe were elected last year or recently seated. Uh, gives them a little bit more information about who we are, what we do, and, uh, and all that fun stuff. All right, uh, if there's no other questions on that portion, I'll run to the, to the REDS, the Regional Economic Development Summits on Forestry. Okay, so uh, the uh, Wisconsin Council on Forestry um, has established a, uh, a, a REDS committee. It's a Regional Economic Diversification Summit. Uh, Wisconsin, the uh, EDA or Economic Development Administration is leading the efforts along with some folks in Wisconsin. Um, I'm not going to go over this thing you know, verbatim, uh, but just to let you know that we do have staff representing uh, the Planning Commission working on a uh, steering committee. Uh, Crystal Rohde in our office uh, is working as, as a strategic planning team member uh, for this event. Since I sent this information to uh, Lynn, um, there's a, uh, some additional information came out on April 9th. The two listening sessions that were referred to in this document as being to be determined have been determined. And I can certainly email that uh, information to, to Lynn so she can post that out to all of you. But the listening sessions will be held on May 6th, uh, this, this uh, coming month from two o'clock to four o'clock and May 11th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, for that function. So that's, uh, there's an opportunity to join by webinar and there you can see the strategic planning team uh, there's a number of different local folks uh, that are part of this. And I would imagine maybe your forestry department has uh, provided some additional details to county board members uh, on appropriate committee levels as well. Um, just wanted to wrap up with one final thing that I was not, in, that was not included in your packet. Um, the planning commission late last fall was working with a number of communities in looking at applying for uh, community development block grant COVID funding assistance. And as part of that effort, um, the town of Sand Lake had contacted us and asked us to help them prepare an application for uh, funding consideration to the department administration. Uh, that effort uh, has resulted in a grant award to the town of Sand Lake. Uh, they are receiving $101,700 of grant dollars to help establish a food pantry in the community of Stone Lake. So I've been working with uh, the town board and uh, Hal Helwig at the community level in, uh, in that grant effort, uh, working, them with the app working with them for the application and all the required component parts. So on March 23rd, they received a, a letter of award. Uh, they got a number of things to complete over the next 45 days in order to meet the objectives of getting the contract by uh, early May. So they're going to receive funding that will help pay for rent of a, a food pantry, food shelter uh, in their community. And uh, up, probably through December of 2022 is what the grant will cover. And then they'll receive a part of that $100,000 a grant award will be used to purchase food from our national uh, food pantry organizations. And if they need additional supplemental uh, food, they can buy it locally at uh, uh, food stores uh, in the region. So really great thing for the community. Uh, I know others in the region applied for dollars as well and received some funding, uh, particularly up in Bayfield County is another one that I'm aware of, but uh, in Sawyer County specific, the town of Sand Lake did receive uh, 100,000 or 100, $101,700 for their project, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that's my more lengthy report than normal, but I uh, appreciate the time and opportunity. Any questions for Mr. Johnson? Mr. Duffy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Cheryl, in looking at the housing we have and home buyers, on eligibility, how low uh, or a moderate income qualifies for that? Sure, it's a low to moderate income based income. So a family of 
uh, one, I don't have it right in front of me. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Duffy, but I believe uh, um, a one person household, low to moderate income is $42,000. Um, I could probably find it for you real quick, but it's based on household size. Uh, so that's what we have to look for uh, as it relates to um, how they're eligible. So 42,250, I think is the, that actually might be a four person household. If you give me three seconds, I can find it for you quick here. All right, but consecutive though. Um, so a one person household, um, this is 2020 figures. I, they've just been approved, but I don't have an updated sheet in front of me. A one person household in Surrey County is 39,700. Uh, it did jump up a little bit from that. So I think it's 40,250 is what a one person household is. A uh, four person household in Surrey County is uh, probably about 57,000. That's their gross combined annual income. For eligibility oh, purposes. Oh, equity. Do they have to have any equity in the house? They need to have equity, correct. Yes, they cannot be underwater to be eligible. There's other factors that are uh, examples of uh, eligibility. So they have to have equity um, as it relates to the improvements that are necessary. Um, the additional improvements get, uh, include can be included as potential equity in the project. Um, homeowners also have to have uh, a homeowner's insurance or if they do not have homeowner's insurance, they have to have a letter from their insurance carrier that says that if these improvements are uh, completed, they will be given homeowner's insurance. And they also have to be current on their property taxes. How many of these loans actually are written off each year? Because uh, very few are written off, hardly, hardly any. And um, if they are written off, who, what happens to that one? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you, sir. Oh, if, if, if it is, you write it off, a loan off, who, who sustains that one? Where's, you just- Right, so yeah, great, great question. So the funds that Sawyer County received back in the early 2009, 2010, I think it was, um, and I think you actually had some funds from before that. Um, those are federal source dollars from the Department of Housing and Urban Development given to the state of Wisconsin, granted to the Sawyer County. So if a homeowner uh, is, uh, walks away from the home and the bank has possession and there's no payoff. Those are, those funds are just uh, written off the books. Uh, so there's no, there's no financial impact to the county as it relates to general obligation or general dollars. Those are just federal dollars that we don't receive and they just get written off the books. And it doesn't happen very often. I mean, there are times when, you know, people just walk away and they, that's what happens. Uh, but uh, it's unfortunate that that is, that, that, that does happen, but it's very, very rare. Any other questions for Mr. Johnson? Mr. Betcher? Yeah, I have a... Mr. Betcher, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, this is Jesse Betcher. Um, how, many, how many counties do you cover in the Northwest Regional Planning Commission? Uh, we cover the 10 Northwest counties. So, so when you say that there was 306 million uh, you know, given back or put into the local communities, you're just referring to those 10 counties, is that correct? Yeah, that's the 306 million, that's based on the, uh, on the, on the business loan side. Right. That's business side, correct. Right, no, I understood that. I just didn't know how much, how big of a region you were talking about for that, that dollar amount. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Mr. President, do you have any questions? Um, no, not off the top of my head. The only thing I was uh, thinking about was in regards to are these, and I already, I'm pretty confident I already know the answer, but these home loans can't be given on trust land, correct? Uh, th that is correct, Brian. Um, we were doing some projects on, on trust land but um, new guidance has come, down, has come down to us from Department of Administration that has told us that we can no longer do that. So I know uh, back in 2009 or 10, Sawyer County uh, did a kind of a, a rollout of one, uh, and then we just took that and continued it. But new guidance that we received in the last couple of years has told us that we can no longer do that, unfortunately. 
Any other questions for Mr. Johnson? All right, moving on. Thank you for your report. Uh, yep, thank you, everybody. Moving on to number 11, Economic Development Corporation report. Good morning, thank you. The month of March was certainly with the rollout of the American Rescue Plan, uh, certainly a lot of daily and weekly uh, information and programmatic changes. We've continued to monitor all the small business development uh, programs as we have over the last the past year. Uh, before I get to them, one thing that um, affects us locally is um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture sort of recognized that they had some gaps in their uh, program development under the CARES Act and uh, have issued this pandemic assistance for producers, which is designed to fill those gaps. Specifically for Sawyer County, that affects timber harvesting and hauling. There is a high level of frustration in that sector regarding pandemic relief, uh, which some of it was promised under the CARES Act, was never rolled out. Now they're waiting for details uh, to, under the USDA uh, current program. So we're, uh, we're monitoring that and get information to those people as best we can. Under the Small Business Development Administration, um, changes to each of the programs that have been in, in play over the last year, the Paycheck Protection Program, even since I generated this report, uh, the sign up date for uh, that has been extended to May 31st. So they'll, they'll have till the end of June to process those programs, which uh, Clare County businesses were uh, pretty involved in, in, uh, in under the CARES Act. And those uh, benefits are still available. The, there is a program called the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant which uh, the sign up just um, ha started this last week. I've been in communication with uh, Sawyer County businesses that could be possibly be eligible for that. The Park Theater, Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. So um, I'm following up to them to make sure that they have everything they need should they choose to uh, um, take advantage of it. The economic injury disaster loans, kind of as a continuation. There are people that had made for the grant portion of that that had made application and didn't receive it in the first round are eligible, but they aren't issuing any more grants to new players. The program that we're watching very closely is there isn't much information available on it yet. They kind of are going down this, this uh, prioritization in some of these various sectors, you know, dealing with the restaurants and shuttered venues continuation of existing programs. But in the American Rescue Plan, there is a thing called the Community Navigators Initiative, which is designed to provide support to organizations that are serving underserved communities. And they have said that they'll have a first round priority um, in organizations that are serving uh, Native American communities and women-owned businesses. So we've, uh, watching for the launch of details on that. Um, this is work, as you know, that uh, we've been focusing on over the last year, continues to be a, um, a, an ongoing daily priority. So we're hoping that there's gonna be um, grant funds available. I've been uh, putting the, the building blocks together to prepare our organization to potentially take advantage depending on what the details are. Small Business Administration all, already fund a lot of uh, what they consider this type of thing through the Small Business Development Center, the UW, our local one, UW Superior. We've been working all uh, for the past year closely with them. They also support the SCORE Mentor Program. Our hopes are that this is gonna drill down to the real local level and support the type of work that uh, we are doing. You know, in searching for grants, the challenge is always, you know, program versus project. Everybody wants a new project, the new flavor of the week sort of thing to fund. We're hoping this money supports what we're already doing, meeting the priorities that are developed here locally. I'll keep you updated as that, uh, as that unfolds. 
there are some communities in Wisconsin working with the Department of Revenue and uh, a coalition of organizations to sort of future-proof their, um, their local economy. They've selected three pilots, one in Wausau, Green Bay, and Rhinelander. I reached out to uh, Wausau just to see what the process is and if there's any benefit for uh, um, looking, you know, for community uh, outreach in, the, in Sawyer County to look look further into the future. I was pleased to hear the report Sheldon just gave on the, on the, the REDS program, the Regional Economic Diversification Summit. Been monitoring this closely as, as it relates to um, the forest product sector, which is significant in our county. Um, we are fortunate in that Northwest Regional Planning, as Sheldon indicated, will be a, a key player in the, in the planning and uh, development of that. Also, the forest economist who is involved with that for the DNR is a, a DNR staff person headquartered right here in Hayward. So he brings a, a local regional perspective that uh, sometimes uh, we don't get. Um, I've had other meetings, uh, just making sure others were aware of this. Uh, uh, Midwest Forest Products met with Eric Mackey, Bill Johnson of Johnson Timber, just to be sure. And they, well, Sheldon mentioned these listening sessions, they'll be conducting uh, stakeholder section, uh, sessions. So I expect that these agency uh, or these industry professionals will be getting contacted directly, but I want them to be aware of the process uh, ahead of time, spoken with uh, the Office of Rural Prosperity and uh, the vice chair of the forestry council. So we um, looking forward to that starting next month. As, uh, as Sheldon mentioned, working with the Economic Development Administration, um, if you want to align with their priorities, um, you need to filter things through um, a plan that Northwest Regional does, as always done for this, is up to date. The, the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy or SEDS plan. Well, it'll be the same process. Whatever priorities come out of this REDS process, any grant opportunities for our organization or others will have to align with comes in with items specifically identified in those plans. So we want to make sure that the local industry uh, uh, leaders are heard and that county forest and uh, others. Uh, that our needs are well reflected in that. So we have opportunities to leverage funds down the line. I've indicated in, in the report, there is a new regional representative for the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. I've met with him uh, um, a couple times. He's located in Weyerhaeuser. Um, he, he'll be a key player as WEDC is uh, significant in some of the things that are come, going to come forward that we're waiting to hear about, you know, we, we're monitoring these federal programs, recovery assistance. The state has received funding. They have up to 600 million targeted for small business relief, another 50 million targeted for tourism. Details are not out yet how that will fit. So these regional representatives having a relationship is going to be key. And I encourage anybody to, uh, uh, he's a lifelong resident of Weyerhaeuser, so he's, he's from the north, and um, uh, I've been very pleased to, to begin the process of working with him. Our board of directors at the Economic Development uh, Corporation has been uh, uh, extremely busy this year so far, um, both the executive committee meeting regularly, um, the finance committee, they um, have approved a budget for this year. That budget does, they just last week approved uh, extending the director's time to four days a week beginning in May. So um, I will have additional time to do fundraising and uh, provide outreach to the business community. Uh, the broadband committee has been uh, under the leadership of uh, Bruce Paulson and Leo Carlson has been contacting all the service providers um, in um, to, to provide service to Sawyer County communities. As uh, 
you've certainly heard before that uh, we really can't take advantage of these broadband uh, funding opportunities that come along if we don't have a partner service provider. So that's what uh, getting, you know, players have changed. There's some new entities involved. So making those connections, finding out what their plans and needs are so we can help them um, in their efforts to expand service to underserved areas within the county. We also are planning in re sort of over the last year <clears throat> in dealing with hundreds of businesses, there's a lot of lessons have been learned um, as far as different types of businesses, different uh, sectors, their ability to meet some of these federal programs. Uh, so we're looking at uh, in the early stages of planning a class later this spring after tax season to just get, get some basic information out there on some, some financial uh, literacy type things, profit and loss, cash flow, all these things that sort of fit together. When it got, when it got as the federal programs rolled out over the last year, when it got to self-employed, um, um, independent business people and stuff, they weren't always the best prepared to take advantage in short order for some of, to meet some of these programmatic deadlines. So, um, Mr. Gardner, I'm just going to ask you, are you, how much more time you, will you need to I'm, report? I'm basically done. I just wanted to, uh, let you know what was coming and, um, prepare to, uh, wrap it up. Do you need a couple more minutes or a couple seconds? Well, I just wanted to, uh, some of the, one thing that, uh, uh, that I had put in the report was in order for our organization to take advantage of any federal opportunities, uh, that are forthcoming, we, we have had to sort of get our house in order as it comes to registering with the federal government so we could receive federal funding. I've done that and I will continue to do that. My, in addition to monitoring, I, you know, we have a significant fundraising effort underway, been contacting local businesses and institutions for support, which has been met with very favorably so far. Thank you. If you have any questions for Mr. Gardner, Mr. Betcher, do you have anything for Mr. Gardner? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bizonette? Uh, no. Okay. Um, pretty much the same thing. We're, we're uh, periodically getting more guidance out of Treasury on these Rescue Plan Act. And so we're kind of waiting on the stuff yet. So. All right. Thank you for your report, sir. Moving on to number 12, motorized trail and non-motorized trail report, Rotec. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Rotec with the Surrey County Snow Bay ATV Alliance. We've been getting a lot of calls, of course, right now with our weather here. People want to come up here and ride their ATVs and that. Um, so with that being said, uh, some of our trails are open, some of them are not. Uh, the Schwamigan National Forest, the ATV trails there are closed from March 15th to May 1st. The Tuscobia Trail is open. Sawyer County Forest Lands trails are, open, are closed from April 1st to May 15th. And that's depending on the weather here. If things uh, dry up a little bit quicker, uh, the county can open them up sooner than that. Uh, LCO trails are open. Road routes are open. And the Flambeau State Forest opens up in May on that. Um, all this information, the Alliance has a Facebook page, puts out on that, keeps people updated on that when trails are opening um, or if there's any special closures because of the conditions. Also, I just want to mention the Alliance Banquet is tomorrow night to uh, um, award all of our volunteers that have done so much to have such a great trail system that we have in place. We had a great snowmobile season. Hopefully, we're going to have a fantastic ATV season like we did last year. Forward to that. Where is there is how would the public find you, the information that you just said? Was that you were just on Facebook? So you county alliance Facebook and also on our website. So okay. county alliance website. Is there a link to the county website for that? I'm not sure. It's, um, the VCV website. There's a link to that. Okay. Um, I'd have to check with Greg on that. I'm not sure if there is uh, the county forestry or not. Okay, just, just a question. Any other questions for Mr. Morotech? 
Mr. Betcher, any questions for Mr. Morotech? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bizonet? I don't have a question, but I do uh, want to share a little information to Don. Um, the resolution was supposed to be on today's agenda for the governing board to pass in support of Sawyer County's trail application. Um, so once I leave here today, um, it's my understanding that they canceled the meeting, but I'll go up there and see if I can get it passed by consensus so we'll have it ready for Wednesday's meeting. Thank you. Anything else for Mr. Morocco? Thank you, sir. Moving on to number 13, Historical Society Potential Partnership Discussion. This is an issue Mr. Betcher has brought to the brought to the board's uh, committee intention back in, I think it was December or January. And so, are you here to speak on that? If you could just identify yourself and then we'll, we'll go forward with that. Yeah, it's, I'm not quite sure where you're going with it. We were just asked to come here, so I don't know what your end goal is. Right. Or, what you're looking for. So what we're looking for, and then I'm glad uh, Mr. Bizonet is on here. So Mr. Betcher, um, if you want to provide a little bit of background as to the nature of this, where this conversation originated, uh, the idea is to see if there's any way that we can provide you support because um, what you're sitting, what you're what you're working with, what you're, I don't say sitting on, but what you have, I think is a treasure trove of information that other people in this county and other people around would want to see that. I mean, you have historical information about the county, about the tribe, and the relationships that are there. And um, for myself, I'm a history geek, and so I would love to be able to just look at some of the information that you have. Mr. Bizonet works uh, in his other life with uh, as a tribal historical preservation officer. And so there's a, there's a potential for a partnership between the tribe and the county to try to find you either a facility to help just, you know, make some of your exhibits available or um, just figure out where this conversation can go. And just, we're here to help. And, and I know when the government says that people get nervous, but you know, I mean, it's just, we just wanna see what, what potential is there. So Mr. Betcher, I wanna open the floor up for you first, if you have anything you wish to add to that. Uh, Mr. Bismuth, you'll be on deck and then we can just see where this goes. Yeah, uh, Mr. Schlender, I think you, you covered it pretty well. I mean, we just wanted to, we wanna, we wanna help. We wanna make the, uh, all of the historical information uh, more available. And to my understanding, you know, a lot of it is, is kind of uh, boxed up and put in attics and stuff like that. And then just the availability of, you know, the access to that. So I understand with COVID, there's been some challenges, but I don't think the, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think the Historical uh, Society Museum there has been open um, for over a year. Uh, I know I tried to get in there several times and, and called and stuff like that. So granted, I understand, you know, we probably won't have another COVID uh, epidemic next year, but, you know, we just want to help make it more available and potentially make this uh, a destination where people want to come to Hayward or to Sawyer County just to see uh, our historical artifacts. So that's pretty much all I have. And before we go, I, I, can you state your name for the record? So Jim, Jim Ferguson. Jim Ferguson, okay. And you're with this Historical Society of President. Okay. Mr. Bizonet. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I guess uh, if we're talking about sharing stuff, which is great. I mean, it's uh, it's been a long time since I was in the the old historical society building. And I know, cause I believe Andy Whitwer was volunteering there at the time. I mean, we're going back probably 20 years, um, drove past it 10 million times, but um, I had stopped in there one time and they did have a lot of old photographs of LCO people out there. She was having difficulty identifying them and that's always been in the back of my mind because, I mean, I was able to, to help her out to a degree, but um, we're getting to the point now where it would be nice if we had some of our few remaining tribal elders, real elders, help identify them. That would, that would not only help LCO, but it would help... Uh, um, 
the historical society. So, but anyway, I'm, I would be willing, more than willing to collaborate in any way you want me to. Um, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be beneficial to both the tribe and the county. So, does that? I'm going to put this on you, actually. Um, can you uh, meet with Mr. Ferguson and maybe with Kenman to see if there's a way that um, there could be some kind of uh, either exchange of information or a follow-up on this conversation? Brian? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were talking to somebody else. What's that now? <laughs> can, can I count on you to take the lead on this to see if we can't get something set up between the tribe and, and Mr. Ferguson to help him with uh, seeing what partnership avail you know is available and see about getting resources? Because I agree with getting um, elders an opportunity to look at some of these documents so that we still have people that can identify who they are. Otherwise, there's just going to be a lot of people called Brian this and that in those pictures. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I have no problem. Uh... If you want me to uh, reach out to uh, Mr. Ferguson or whoever, I mean, I'm willing to work with anybody on this. Mr. Ferguson, is that? Is that no, right? that's fine. Okay. We'll make sure that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have probably the land exchange information so that we can um, see if we can't pick up that, that conversation later on. And then uh, maybe we can see about having like uh, some kind of meeting with um, at Kinnaman so that they, the Historical Society can see what some of the resources the tribe has committed towards historical preservation. I think we need Mr. Brooks' phone number. Right, and so we'll, 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 we'll collect that up and then get that. Lynn, we'll have Lynn coordinate between you and Mr. Bizonet, and Mr. Bizonet will, will, will follow up with that. And Jesse, if you want to join in with that, you should feel, feel free, to, free to do so. Mr. Ferguson, do you have anything you wish to add or anything you wish to say? Not really. It's, you know, we have been closed for years and we haven't done anything. Okay. Our biggest problem is people, volunteers. You know, we're a very old group. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, uh, help, help out with that. Mr. Schlanker, I just wanted to say, uh, piggybacking on that, the volunteers that they do have are phenomenal. I was just working on a project and they got me pictures. They just emailed them to me. So they do have things scanned. It's just a little more, more difficult to get to. Any other questions for Mr. Ferguson? Any other questions on the topic? Mr. Ferguson, thank you for coming in and uh, hopefully we can uh, make, this, uh, make this work out. All right, moving on to number 14. Um, Ms. Zilmer, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, one, I want to thank you for your comments. I actually completely agree with that. What has been presented to this committee has been a draft of, I was looking at the um, county board meeting things on other matters and saw that um, the committees that I'm chairing don't have statements that were in the county, the county board meeting. And so I put this together after looking at uh, various counties and looking under chapter 59 of the Wisconsin statutes. And so what I have here is a very horrible first draft. And so I'm gonna ask um, Mr. Hoff to send this document to legal for its review. And then I'm gonna ask Ms. Beltros, if you and your crew can also look at this and help us kind of um, speak better to what, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, when you get a lawyer writing a document from scratch, you're not gonna, it's not very good, it's very stilted, it's almost in Klingon. So I mean, if you could take a look at that, and then if I could have the committee members look at this document, and then just come back, when we come back next month, we can review that, and then um, and see what we can, uh, see what we can do. Um, it's an important document, but I also don't want this to be, you know, Three month or six month uh, ordeal where we're reviewing and it's just, it's uh, I agree with um, Ms. Zomer. This is supposed to be a strategic oversight, um, you know, kind of planning, kind of lay out the goals of what the goal, what the committee is supposed to try to accomplish, and then also identify the proper committees, uh, the proper agencies, and the other entities that operate under the jurisdiction of this committee. So, 
Ms. Zomer, does that properly reflect your concerns? Yes, thank you. And if I might add, if this is going out for review, an issue I've brought to this committee now for, mem for many years is that I believe this is also the Committee of Jurisdiction for Agriculture. Agriculture has been pretty much totally dropped from the radar in Sawyer County, and I think there is a statutory requirement for that. So if, if you could please have legal look into that, I would appreciate it. That will be done. Any other questions from the committee? Ms. Cecil, do you have anything? No. Mr. Duffy? No. Mr. Betcher? I do not have any questions, thank you. Mr. Bizonet? Nor do I. <clears throat> All right, well, we'll set this matter up for the agenda for next month with a review uh, after legal and see what um, DW Extension can do to help flesh that out. Uh, moving on to number 15, future agenda items. Is there anything that the committee would like to have set for the next month's agenda? Mr. Betcher, anything? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bissonnette? No, I'm good. Cecil? No. Mr. Duffy? No. All right, moving on to number 16, corresponding reports from conferences and meetings, other matters for discussion only. Is there anything that the committee would like to discuss that wasn't on the agenda? Mr. Batchy, do you have anything? Uh, no, I do not, thank you. Mr. Bizonet? Nope. Cecil? Yeah. Mr. Duffy? Yeah. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>